Hey, welcome to Flight Test, I'm Josh. If you're like me, oftentimes you find yourself out in the field with a dead phone and no way to charge it. Today we're gonna to show you how to take a simple car charger and an XT60 connector and make an adapter that can charge your USB devices. Now, there's a lot of Amazon products out there that you can buy that do the exact same thing, but if you're like me, you have a lot of car chargers laying around underneath your car seat, this is a really good way to repurpose it while practicing up on your soldering skills. Obviously the first thing we're gonna need is a car charger. Try to find one that operates between 12 and 24 volts. If you have one that only operates on 12 volts, you're not gonna to wanna to go above a three cell battery. Along with the battery, you're gonna need a way to connect it. So get an XT60, or if you use Deans or JST, you can use that as well. You're only gonna be drawing about 2.1 amps. The wire gauge doesn't need to be too thick, but you do need two pieces of wire, positive and negative, and a way to insulate those wires. So get a thin piece of heat shrink tubing to insulate around the battery connector. When we're all done with this project, we want to protect it from touching anything metal, so we're going to use a larger piece of heat shrink tubing or electrical tape to insulate the whole thing. And of course, we're going to need the battery to power it. For tools for this project, we're going to need a soldering iron and solder, a heat gun or a lighter to shrink the tubing, a handy helper arms that will hold your gear in place while we're soldering together. If you don't have that, don't worry. A simple pair of needle nose pliers and rubber band will work very well for you. And we're also gonna need some scissors or a stripping device to strip the wire. Another tool to have on hand is a multimeter. You wanna check your work regularly as you make your solder joints to make sure your positive and negatives aren't shorted together. First thing we need to do is disassemble these things. All of these disassemble just a little bit differently. Oftentimes the very cheap ones, you just kinda of crack apart like an egg. Just like that. So every charger comes apart a little bit differently. This one was done on the bench in about five seconds. This one was done with uh, Chad and a hacksaw and a scroll saw and a blowtorch in about 15 minutes. So sometimes going more expensive does not mean a better experience. These are cheap, they have a little LED light on. We'll go ahead and move forward. A couple main components you're gonna wanna identify where the spring touches, which is usually at the very tip, like what you see here, is our positive. The sides are our negative. Now the nice thing about this cheap one is you can just pop this off and look how slim and nice that looks. We're now gonna solder a positive wire to where this is and a negative wire to where this is, but we're not gonna go off the main lead. We're gonna go off the board. If you don't have a set of handy helpers, you can take a rubber band and a pair of pliers and make handy helpers yourself. Before soldering, you wanna strip the ends of the wires. With our soldering iron, we're gonna go ahead and prepare the wire ends that we need. We do this by tinning. We have a really great video to teach you how to solder if you've never soldered before. This is our positive pad right here. You can see that because on our back side is where our positive node is. We can remove this if we want, but there's plenty of material here. I'm just gonna go ahead and solder that right to it. We're now gonna take a wire back to the negative pad, which if you follow this down here, this housing is all negative. We're gonna go ahead and go to this pad right here. Now, because we all use iPhones and things that we don't want to have to turn into Apple Care, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that we do not have continuity and I haven't shorted anything out. There we go. And if I touch this to the ground, you can tell we have a nice clean circuit. We're going to take our two leads up to where they flush out and cut them flush. All right. Easy tip to keep these bullets from distorting is to plug it into a male end. Make sure you don't plug a battery in because you're gonna be applying voltage here. Just get another male end or female end depending on what side you're soldering. So I got two little pieces of heat shrink tubing. I'm gonna slide those on before we start soldering. And we'll prepare both wire ends by tinning them as well. This is a real good simple project to learn how to solder. Just make sure when you test it out, you test it out on something that you don't care about. On the XT60, you're gonna see a little indicator, negative and positive. Attach your red wire to your positive terminal. And we're gonna solder up our negative the exact same way we've soldered up our positive. Make sure that your solder joint is nice and shiny. A dull solder joint is a cold solder joint. Once we're happy with our ends, we can slide our tubing over. If you don't have a heat gun, don't worry. You can use a lighter, but make sure you wave it back and forth. Do not burn yourself and don't burn the insulation. And shrink it down. So we're gonna take our heat shrink tubing. We're gonna slide this in. I'm gonna slide the USB end 
just a head so when it shrinks down it covers this up I'm gonna kind of nicely tuck this in on the other side of the XT60 Position a couple times, just kind of get it to where we want as we shrink it down. And we're ready to test it out. So we have our heat shrink on, we have a nice wiggle factor so it won't strain the board. Let's go ahead and plug this in. Our little LED light comes on. Let's charge my phone. Friends, I want to thank you for watching. With just five minutes of time, you can make sure that you never have to worry about dead batteries on your phone or any other USB device. Make sure you subscribe, and we'll see you next time.